Raise your hands if you have people in your schools from different parts of the world. Most people. Bob Johansson talks greatly about constructive polarization, bringing together diverging cultures, just as we see on the slide behind me. How do we do that successfully? What's the value of it? Why is this important in our schools today? I want to talk to you about um, certainty. And here we have the image from Fifty Shades of Grey, if any of you are blushing out there. I know why. Uh, actually, Fifty Shades of Grey is what's increasingly happening in the world. There is less certainty, less and less certainty, but unfortunately, humankind wants us to have certainty in matters. And yet, we heard from Doreen that actually clarity is more important than certainty. And so how do we make sure that those words that are coming through and the, and the values and the beliefs that we are hearing are clear as opposed to certain? It's a difficult world out there as we, as we learn more about the people around us. I just want you to answer this question in your heads. Some of you are thinking pizza. Some of you are thinking hamburgers, chips. Am I right? The actual answer, if we think about this from a clarity perspective, is a little bit more surprising for some of you. You were certain maybe in your pizza answer because you were thinking about your school. When we bring together diverging cultures, we think about the world at large. And the world at large has different eating habits than the one right here in this uh, part of the world. So let's think about what our cafeterias look like. The world is becoming increasingly flat, and I think we have an obligation in our schools to bring that world into the classroom, be it through language learning, travel, international study, globalization of curriculum. I personally think we are doing a disservice to students if they are not learning more than one language before they leave our, our schools. So as school leaders, we need to put on our ballet shoes. Grace is what Bob Johansson is asking us to really master, grace. With that comes great poise so that you can bring together these diverging cultures and, and have the rich conversations and bring different people's opinions and perspectives to the table. There are many ways we can do this. Through technology, for example, we can tease out voices that didn't used to be there. We have anonymous voting now through our Promethean boards and our smart boards. We can find any number of ways through wiki spaces to get people to speak up who previously didn't. And that richness is good for our classrooms. We can also do it through uh, faith or through belief or through value systems. We're doing it very successfully around the world, bringing together leaders of different faiths. We can learn a lot from our beliefs. This particular group, we're looking at the different scriptures and trying to find commonalities. And those commonalities are helpful when we're trying to find a path forward. Even the military does this pretty well, strategizing doesn't get more tense than on the battlefield, but we can take some of those lessons learned in the military and apply them in our schools and find ways, common ground for, for moving forward. And again, our role as school leaders is to find that, to bring together these people and create the, the dialogue. I think in the future there'll be a new, new thinking about what normal is. Uh, I think the numbers of kids with learning differences is on the up. Does that mean that they are strange, unusual, no, it means that we know more and that normal is becoming increasingly uncertain, those 50 shades of gray, increasingly un unknown. Different tools to get there. Um, Queen Rania of your Jordan, she used YouTube as a great way to get her voice out there. How many of us get out there and share a different opinion and you can find all kinds of different voices on TED, through Twitter, through YouTube, any number of media sources for doing that. Bob Johansson also talks about putting something in the middle. Put something in the middle if you've got very, very divergent opinions. You can bring together people with a common, common uh, conversation if you put something in the middle to, have, to spark the dialogue. We can find this very easy in our schools. If you find some very banal topic to bring together people of very, very different opinions. And lastly, he makes a wonderful uh, argument for using intergenerational mentoring. How often can we learn something from the younger generation? Bring the younger people to the table. I can't tell you how many times somebody has helped me with technology who is considerably my junior, and it's very helpful. Just showing you some sources. Here is my final slide. 
um, some things that I found useful in, in putting together these thoughts. So constructive depolarization, bringing together di divergent cultures, listening to different perspectives, and creating rich conversation. Thank you. Thank you.